Individuals with written goals are 39.5% more likely to succeed. Individuals with written goals and weekly accountability are 76.7% more likely to succeed. That's a fact. I need it. I've been using that process, the four goals or the four problems to solve, the four projects, the four rocks. I don't care what you call it in my planner since 2012. Every day, daily time capsule. Every day, six days a week anyway. I don't do it on Sunday, I rest on Sunday. All right, here's what accountability looks like. Life happens, right? Whirlwind, brush fires, issues, challenges, life happens. People who are not accountable Here's how they approach it. They don't ask any questions. They fight reality. You know that if you want to be successful, the first thing you need to do is face reality and just accept that this is the situation. Because as long as you're living in denial, you're not going anywhere. They blame other people. They use personal excuses like it's not my job. And they wait and hope. If it's meant to be, it'll happen. It's not true. If God wants it to happen, it'll happen. But it might happen in the way that you don't want it to happen. Anybody been there? I, Chief, this is God talking. I need to get you from here to here. You can do it my way, or you can do it my way. <laughs> Same is true here. You can do it the best way that it can be done, or you can get there the slow way. How about if we just decide to be accountable? I think I don't need a clicker. I'll just be like, okay. First of all, they seek reality. What's, what's going on here? They acknowledge reality. This is the way it is. Doesn't have to stay that way, but this is the way it is. They own it. Glenn told a great story yesterday. He mentioned three books yesterday. How many of you have read books that have changed your life? Okay. I have a whole library of books that I may never get to them all, but I decided to do something a long time ago. Sherry Perry does the same thing now. Some of you do this. I, I got Amazon one click. Somebody mentions a book. I say, I need this book, especially when they say, this is the best leadership book I've ever read. I ain't writing that down. I'm going to go to Amazon immediately, one click. So yesterday I ordered three books. I got Amazon Prime. They'll be, they'll be at my house. Uh, that was yesterday. They'll be at my house today. Am I going to read them today? No. <coughs> Browse them, get the concept. But the story was, I won't tell the whole story, but Navy SEALs, they're going out to train, and uh, they're not even supposed to be fighting, and all of a sudden, warfare breaks out. People shooting at each other. Come to find out they were shooting at each other. So in their debrief, how many of you know that everything significant that you do, you need to do a debrief? What happened? How'd it go? You know, and that sort of thing. What's working? What's not working? That's the debrief. In my book that's coming out uh, early next year called FTI, there's a, a principle. I don't know if you've followed it on the Inner Circle website, but there's uh, 10 principles that I taught. One of them is the progress principle. And it's always measuring what were we expecting, what actually happened, what's working, what's not working, tracking those numbers, those kind of things. And so when they debriefed, they said, you know, what happened here? And people started talking about uh, what happened. And all along the line, 
Each one took responsibility. It was my fault. I shot the first shot. I thought it was enemy. Next guy, no, my fault. I should have identified who was shooting. I shot back. The squad leader, no, it's my fault. I should have known. Comes down to the head guy. He said, no, all of you guys are wrong. It's my fault because I didn't communicate well in the beginning. How many of you know that leadership is effectively communicating your vision?